Greetings, everyone. Today is another beautiful Sabbath here in Minnesota, and I'm reaching out with Michael today, and Michael's got a script for us. We're in the seventh session of Bruce Lee, and this is the 24th of June, mm-hmm. 2023. Michael, welcome. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Hello, dear Brett. This is the seventh session on Bruce Lee already. Let's dive in it. Last time we got a brief information for the official Wikipedia theory, and now we are going to prove, disprove, and to try to use our logic brain and common sense. This is the flag of Hong Kong. Nicely fitting five pieces of five pointed stars hong kong special administrative region of the people's republic of china special region in china where bruce lee was raised and bruce lee died that's interesting i don't think i've ever seen the flag for hong kong before that's really interesting you put that up michael Mm -hmm. thank you for that yeah it's not quite different from the flag of china which consists of five five pointed stars yeah, but hmm. as Hong Kong is a harbor city, maybe they have just uh, thought that it would be more appropriate to use that uh, kind of a sea plant, yeah, more or less. The former U.S. karate champion Joe Louis said about Bruce Lee, I consider him by far the greatest, and for those who don't consider him the greatest, I have not inserted that second picture here, consider him one of the top contenders to be the greatest. He said there's a Zen level of consciousness, but Joe Louis also had gotten made an interview. And he says that, uh, do you think that he would make a good full contact fighter? And Louis said, no, because I don't think he could have taken a good punch. What do you say that? Louis said his skinny neck and skinny jaw. His neck was just too long. You don't see long neck people up there on top. That's the only thing that ever um, Joe Louis said uh, about, oh, 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 no, no, no. But uh, he considers him to be the best. Okay. Thinking about worshipping images and idols. Another character says, Bruce Lee, in retrospect, was a little man, forged himself into a physical giant bread. Mm -hmm. And the conclusion, a very interesting documentary, which we will use uh, in the next time, says most of us look for immortality in religion, in our work, or on our tombstone, and Bruce Lee found his immortality in the movies. That's a very sad thing, which I think that many of the people out there, they don't uh, comprehend what that means. Because a movie is just a fabrication, it's just fantasy. It's nothing in real life, nothing of real value. And also it's been uh, stated by Bruce Lee himself in a radio interview he gave that he does not believe in God. So he's not part of the resurrection and he's just believing in himself. And he only lasted 32 years. That's a very short lifespan, I'd say. And uh, in uh, China or in Asia, people generally believe more in themselves because uh, many very uh, intelligent people are gathered in uh, Asia and therefore they say that no, we are not falling for any false god, Uh, we are just worshipping ourselves, the third eye, uh, self-enlightenment and all the stuff. And I think that's a a trap for the so-called intelligent people, that they don't want to worship uh, uh, anything uh, else but themselves, Brett. Well, it fits. It fits, Michael, mm-hmm. biblically, you know. Mm-hmm. So if you ask somebody in the industry, they say that, oh, yeah, that uh, Bruce, Bruce Lee, this is uh, wrongly translated here, is my idol. I like him. I admire him. Sure, because one actor tells this about the other. And therefore, we go into the official narrative of his death. And not saying that Bruce Lee would fight back from the grave here. This is, this is just another movie. When you are dead, you are dead and you're not coming back from the grave. You're not going through walls or anything else. Yeah, you're not a wandering spirit and 500 million other mythologies in any native American, uh, Indonesian, Asian roams there would be. 
The Bible explicitly says that the deaf are sleeping. They do not know anything. The impact that Bruce Lee or martial arts made around the world was extreme. Um, if you think of 1974, one year after Bruce Lee died, there was a big, big smash hit from a guy, from a singer called Carl Douglas, called Kung Fu Fighting. Everybody knows this. And that is no coincidence, yeah, because that has been uh, produced and uh, his manager was uh, Eric Wolfson. Eric Wolfson is one part of the Alan Parsons project. <laughs> so uh, there are no coincidences, yeah, they are just making money. Yeah, Bruce Lee and uh, all these Kung Fu movies which came after him, they are just a big money making machine. Yeah, so this Kung Fu fighting was a top hit. Look at this uh, placements here. Number one in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, United States and Great Britain. Yeah, it was everywhere. It was the smash hit of the summer in 1974, one year after Bruce Lee died. So if you think of coincidences, no, it is just a big money machine. And Alan Parsons project, let me tell you, is a Freemason project. Yeah, Alan Parsons was the sound engineer um, or assistant sound engineer on the Beatles uh, later on and also the sound engineer on Pink Floyd. Yeah, and Pink Floyd has not by coincidence made a song called Another Brick in the Wall. Yeah, there are ties to Freemasonry on Pink Floyd. So coming back to Bruce Lee. What Wikipedia tells you is that he was a martial artist and actor and he founder of uh, martial arts also and uh, a pop culture icon of the 20th century who bridged the gap between East and West. Actually, I think in my humble opinion, I think that's the biggest achievement that he has uh, made, that he was just uh, having uh, both sides together, the West interested in the things of the East. Yeah, and so also uh, presented uh, arts of the East uh, to the entire world. It's not only to the West, but to the entire world. Okay, speaking of his death at the age of 32, he collapsed quite uh, two and a half months before he collapsed uh, on May the 10th in an automated dialogue replacement session at the Golden Harvest Film Studios in Hong Kong. And he had headache and... Uh, yeah, he could then uh, be uh, revived and then on uh, Friday, July the 20th, Lee was in Hong Kong to have dinner with the actor of James Bond, George Lazenby, with whom he was intending to make a movie or film. According to Lee's wife, Linda, Lee met producer Ray Chow at two o'clock in the afternoon to discuss the making of the movie Game of Death, which was uh, unfinished at the time. They worked until 4 p.m. and then drove together to the home of Lee colleagues Betty Ting Pei, a Taiwanese actress. The three went over to a script, over the script at Ting's home and then Chao left to attend a dinner meeting and Lee, Bruce Lee, complained a headache and Betty Ting gave him the painkiller Equagesic, which contained bone aspirin and the tranquilizer Mipropomate. Yeah. Around 7.30 he went to lie down for a nap. When Lee did not come for dinner, Chao came to the apartment but he was unable to wake Lee up. A doctor was summoned and spent 10 minutes attempting to revive Lee before sending him by ambulance to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and he was declared dead on arrival at the age of 32. There was no visible external injury. However, according to autopsy reports, he had a swollen brain, 13% increase. 13, huh? The autopsy found equagesic in his system. Chow stated later that uh, Lee died from an allergic reaction to the tranquilizer mipropomate, the main ingredient from that equagesic pill. And officially, it was ruled as a death by misadventure. So, his body and his family were returning to her hometown in Seattle, and Bruce Lee had a funeral. <laughs> in seattle yeah so that's it oh in seattle yeah in, in seattle yeah in seattle okay. right yeah, yeah. donald Tier, forensic you know there's i i lived in seattle for a short time in the oh, 90s yeah. And, oh yeah you told and me. uh there's a very large asian population in seattle yeah yeah 
Lee's iconic status and untimely death fed many wide rumors and theories. These included murder involving the trials and a supposed curse on him and his family. Donald Cheer, a forensic scientist recommended by Scotland Yard, who had overseen over 1,000 autopsy, was assigned to the Lee case. His conclusion was death by misadventure caused by cerebral edema, so brain swelling due to the reaction of compounds present in the combination medication equagesic. Although it was initial, initial speculation that cannabis found in Lee's stomach may have contributed to his death. Tears said it would be both irresponsible and irrational to say that cannabis might have triggered either the events of Bruce Collips on May the 10th or his death on July the 20th. The clinical pathologist at Queen Elizabeth Hospital, Dr. R. R. Lee said, reported at a corona hearing that the death could not have been caused by cannabis. In the 2018 biography, author Matthew Polly consulted with medical experts and theorized that the cerebral edema that killed Lee had been caused by overexertion and heat stroke. That was not considered at the time because it was a poorly understood condition. Furthermore, Lee had his underarm sweat glands removed in late 1972 in the apparent belief that underarm sweat was unphotogenic on film. Polly further theorized that this caused Lee's body to overheat while practicing in hot temperatures on May the 10th and July the 20th, 1973, resulting in heat stroke that in turn exacerbated. Exacer yeah, what else? Um, Finalized Exacerbated, the, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> every time. Or however the, they say it, yeah, it's it's a, it's a really tough word to pronounce. Exacerbated the cerebral edema that led to his death. In the article of December 2022 of Clinical Kidney Journal, a team of researchers examined the various theories regarding Lee's cause of death and concluded that this fatal Cerebral edema was brought by hyponatremia, an insufficient concentration of sodium in the blood. So that means that he has drank too much water. So that is the official Wikipedia page. And now all the mess will start. This is a kind of a death certificate of Bruce Lee at the age of 32. Don't come up with the conclusion that Bruce Lee just died and he was the extreme smart, intelligent man there ever was on this so-called planet. He was just 32 and with 32 you will make mistakes. You will even make mistakes when you are 70 years old. So come on. So don't judge anybody here. We are just in for the truth. We just want to know the truth, how the system in this world has been rigged and what um, what my approach is I just want to find out the most appropriate and most likely truth and how everything has been connected so I can't give you any names but uh, you can draw your own conclusion let's get it on as just like uh, yeah like we are just uh, inspectors uh, in the criminal department so 32 a film actor American yeah Cerebral edema due to hypersensitivity, death by misadventure, anonymous decision. Okay, so that is the official document, so to speak. The report of the death of American citizen, yeah, with his American address, yeah, says acute cerebral edema due to hypersensitivities, death by misadventure, and anonymous, etc. By Hong Kong, etc., etc. Yeah, we can go on and on and on. I got all many statements here, also from uh, Dr. Langford, who know him very well, and who you will hear him later, or you will see him later. They say that no detectable amounts of uh, THC and uh, CBN, the principal ingredients of cannabis, were detected in the blood. But there are other anomalies where we cannot go into the, at the moment. The congestion of the rectum is unusual and I'm unable to specifically account for this. Because of this unusual appearance, I suggested that the government analysts include or exclude the drug cantharidine. However, it may simply represent a post-mortem change. Not one well-controlled study of chronic or subchronic cannabis use in humans has demonstrated any major chronic problems caused by cannabis. Cannabis has not been shown to be lethal in humans. Yeah, so even if they have found cannabis, um, also that is not uh, most probably likely the cause of death. We are talking about pure cannabis. More later on. 
The body of that is of a well-built Chinese male of about 30 years of age and 172 centimeters in length. There are no external signs of injury. There is a small surgical incision on the inner aspect of the left ankle. There is a needle puncture mark in the front of the left chest, 5 centimeters from the midline and 11 centimeters vertically from the sternal notch. There is an old and healed liner scar 10 centimeters situated in the right groin yeah because he had uh, a testicle problem that's uh, been recorded here there are no recent or old needle marks or unusual scare scar on the arm interesting that they are not talking about the so-called removed sweat glands or any needle marks the brain weights more than uh, than average Okay, so in view of the fact that no CBN and THC were detected, I consider that it is unlikely that Bruce Lee died from an overdose of cannabis alone. Mm -hmm. Tissues from both kidneys were examined microscopically, and the sole abnormal feature is the intense congestion of the kidney vessels of all sizes. So we're speaking now of the funeral. What? I'm not speaking about the medical issues here. Just, just, just wait. We are speaking about the funeral here. They had to attend this ritual of a Chinese funeral, bowing down three times in front of the deceased one and all the stuff. So, and his widow um, made uh, the rituals of the ceremony without complaint. And then, during or on the day of the funeral, a sensation broke out from the press. A controversial scandal had broken into the newspapers. Originally, Raymond Chow and Linda Lee told the press that Bruce Lee had collapsed in his home and later died. And uh, then it came up that he died in the home of sexport extras Betty Ting Pei, with whom Lee was reportedly having an affair. What added more fuel to the fire was that the two were alone on the night he died. So, and the Chinese press were having a field day. About Lee's abrupt end, was foul play involved or was he truly dead and whatever happened? Did he die of his drug use because the insurance policies could forfeit the policies uh, because uh, Lee stated that he did not use any drugs. Therefore, the final verdict was death caused by misadventure, which means a series of unrelated events, so that his widow, Linda Lee, could be receiving the money from the insurance policies, what I told you last time. Many observers, including these doctors, were leery not only of the verdict, but uh, of the decision that was Bruce Lee had died by hypersensitivity towards an ingredient of that equagesic pill. It's everything here is coming of the uh, documentary Wu Tang collection, Bruce Lee, Death by Misadventure. Now, this is Dr. Langford. Dr. Langford has treated Bruce Lee on the 10th of May when he first collapsed and was on the merge of death. He said that during the trial the spectators have been excluded and that suggests that you may be trying to taint the evidence a bit. Not saying that they did, but he said that the spectators were excluded. And now we compare that with the colorful quote of there was all kind of uh, conspiracy theories. People thought the triads, the mafia, mm -hmm. has something to do with it. They, it, this, it was uh, said that his family had a curse, his father had a curse, that he passed on to Brandon. And what is your belief on how he passed away? Uh, uh, what? What's the story in the West? I don't the, know. The, oh, you don't know the story. The story in the West that there was how how Bruce Lee died. They said it was a couple. Yeah. They said. Uh, he upset it because of his success in the film industry and taking the martial arts around the world that he upset it the triads ma mafia 
organization. No, 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 no. no. Okay, that wasn't true. The other said that um, um, he was fighting a curse that was. No. No, nope, that's not no, true. Not okay. true. So what? So, <laughs> 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 no, I, that's uh, I know that, that that news in the public. I think in the old days, thirty years ago, uh, because the the communication not not the pop, uh, not fast enough. Yeah. There's no internet. Nobody knows. He died in somebody's house. Uh huh. Yeah. That's everybody knows. He died died in somebody's house. Uh, my boss go to pick him up. Oh. Um, then send him to the hospital. Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan said, "He just died in somebody's house, completely normal. My boss picked him up. And that's also Mr. Raymond Chow. So therefore, one involved in this uh, dying of Bruce Lee." is also the boss of uh, Jackie Chan. So later the boss of Jackie Chan and during the time of Bruce Lee's death that was the companion of Bruce Lee. On the other hand, Betty Ting Pei says, I would admit if I did it. <laughs> I do not have the right to say anything. Bruce Lee had heart problems. I think he was in poor health since he was a kid. Brett. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's why you become a martial arts world star because you got health problems and heart problems uh, since he was a kid, sure. Yeah, what true is that he could not make it to the United States Army because one leg was shorter than the other and he was short sighted and there were some other minor in, 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 uh, things. Uh, also, one testicle was hidden. There's a special medical phrase about it, which I, I'm, I'm apologizing myself. I have forgotten. But uh, so therefore he did not he could not be drawn to the United States uh, to fight in Vietnam, for example, Yeah, because he was an American citizen. So usually he was uh, in that a at, at that age he was uh, 18 when he returned to san francisco in 1959 yeah so usually he could have been drawn to the united states army but uh, he failed the medical mm. exam right mm. but that has nothing to do with the no, had nothing to do with the death and had nothing to do with his medical condition at the time of his death yeah mm -hmm. yeah so he she's claiming that he's got heart problems mm -hmm. Since she, since she was a kid and other problems. And then he's, she's boasting and said, uh, oh, he even used electrical muscle simulator. Yeah? So to, um, to enhance her position that uh, he had heart problems and he created it himself by using electronic uh, muscle stimulator, EMS. Yeah, so that's the position of uh, Betty Ting Pei. So during the funeral in 1973, afterwards, there is the only interview ever showing Bruce Lee's mother and his uh, younger brother, Robert. And the interviewer said, uh, Bruce Lee is called the Galileo of martial arts. So please welcome Grace and Robert Lee. So uh, mother and brother of the deceased. Good night, America. Yeah. And on that interview, Robert Lee says, um, has, Robert Lee has been asked, are you satisfied with the official reasons given for your brother's death? And um, Robert replies, says, I really, um, 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 I'm, yeah, it's just like a mystery to me. <laughs> yeah, so they do not know. Yeah, they are not convinced about the outcome of the trial. Mm -hmm. I said, okay than just uh, asking his brother once again. Because his brother is not convinced of the official cause of death. So, a few years later, he hired a private detective, yeah, and he asked himself, my, 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 on the night that Bruce Lee died, why was Raymond Chow so slow in calling a doctor or an ambulance? That's a valid question. Don't trust the internet because the internet will tell you in the real story of Bruce Lee's death. You see that now with the 50th anniversary, uh, hundreds of documentations will arise and they will tell you that oh, everything was fine. It was just his own fault and all the stuff. Um, this video tells you a film production company based off Hong Kong, Raymond and Bruce were the best of friends, which is total BS. 
Interesting to know also that these actors where Bruce Lee had died, Betty Ding Pei had been introduced by Bruce by Raymond Chow one year before in Hong Kong. Yeah. So, and why did it take that long to get Bruce to an hospital? It was about uh, the delayed reaction of Pity Ting Pei, the delayed reaction of Raymond Chow, the delayed reaction of the doctor they had uh, uh, phoned. And then uh, they have, of course, they have phoned the, the hospital, which was, uh, yeah, on the other side of, of, uh, of the town. Yeah. Yeah. So from Beacon Hill Road to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, although the Baptist Hospital, where he had been treated uh, before, uh, that would be much more close. Yeah? So that you can think for yourself why it took that long. The pill, equagesic, has been said to be prescribed to millions as a reliever of stress and anxiety. Yeah? So it was a relaxant pill. It was not necessarily a painkiller. But in recent years, the drug had been banned in numerous countries. And doctors are telling you, yeah, 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 people, yeah, they're having idiosyncratic reactions to meprobamate. Yeah, so the second ingredient uh, is meprobamate. Okay, so going back to that uh, documentation here, Robert Lee, so the younger brother of Bruce Lee, has enlisted a former Hong Kong police detective because he fears that Raymond Chow has something to do with it because uh, Bruce Lee had intended to make films without Raymond Chow, leaving the company of Raymond Chow called Golden Harvest in danger. So nothing about, oh yeah, Bruce Lee and Raymond Chow, they were the best of friends. It's far from that. But the conclusion of that private investigator, and this is uh, the brother Robert Lee here, uh, was that there was only one thing that killed Bruce Lee in the end, yeah, and that was a reaction to, that's a wrong, wrong uh, translation here, me prober made. Yeah? So the private investigator PI came to the conclusion it was a very tragic accident, or it's the same like the jury or the trial, it was a misadventure, death by misadventure, about an idiosyncratic or an allergic reaction on that. If you ask Chuck Norris, who broke his silence, he said, yeah, that was an allergic reaction to uh, aspirin. <laughs> Everybody says that. And therefore, at least his statement of Jackie Chan must be incorrect, Brett, because he said he just died in somebody's house completely normal. But an idiosyncratic reaction, an allergic reaction is not completely normal. That's why it's called idiosyncratic or allergic. That's my point. Having strange, unusual habits, way of behaving, strange and unusual. Yeah, so strange and unusual, I say, Brad, is just the opposite of completely normal. I don't, I don't know if you agree on that, but I say that's just the opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like I'm hearing an echo, by the way. Um, oh, I'm, uh, you are totally decreased in volume here. I can hardly oh, understand okay. you. Oh, all right. Well, anyway, it's as if Jackie Chan is saying, nothing to see here, move on. Sure, because he he's talking about his boss, Raymond Chow, who picked Bruce Lee up. You see that he's involved in that because he has a business relationship with Raymond Chow, who officially picked up uh, Bruce Lee and called the ambulance. Yeah, he can't act any other than to uh, normalize the event mm -hmm. sure. or underplay, downplay the event. Right. Yeah. Protect his boss. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, and the question arises and uh, here is a mm -hmm. prolific uh, Kung Fu genius. Um, called Alex, um, he said, uh, did Raymond kill Bruce? Who would kill his golden goose? Yeah, because Bruce Lee was the golden goose of uh, Golden Harvest, uh, of Raymond Chow Corporation, his company. 
Yeah, and I, I say that at first glance, Alex has the logic on his side. But I'm not telling that Raymond Chow killed Bruce Lee. Because first of all, he's got the best of all alibis. He was in the restaurant, allegedly, together with George Lazenby, who wanted to have a part in the upcoming movie Game of Death. Yeah, so he's the one who's got an alibi. Yeah, so Raymond um, Chow um, has whitewashed his hands, so to speak. Yeah, so um, at first glance, uh, it, it seems quite logic that uh, Raymond has nothing to do with that. But it gets much more complicated. Because this is another actor, uh, Shi Kien, who played the villain in the last uh, published uh, movie, Enter the Dragon, Han. Is Shi Ken. He said that uh, he talked to Bruce a few weeks before his passing. And he says, yeah, Bruce told me that I treat movies as just a side job. I want to be a director. So that would mean that he was then uh, um, in competition to Raymond Chow. Not only letting him down, but in competition, which is far worse than anything else. And even the biographer of the name of Matthew Polly, who has uh, uh, published uh, lately a big biography of Bruce Lee Alive, said in an interview here that Raymond Chow had a reputation for ruthlessness. Raymond Chow was known as the smiling face tiger. To nod and agree to everything and then he would rip you apart. So, that is a quote of a biographer who wrote a 700-page book on Bruce Lee. I do not know Raymond Chow in person. But I can just hand over and pass over the information. So that's a book that he wrote, Matthew Polly, Bruce Lee Alive. Now, since Bruce Lee obviously passed at July the 20th. This is a picture of him in the hospital and this is a picture of him in the coffin. And this is a picture of him during the funeral. And the funeral had been used in the two finishing film Game of Death, which is uh, very macabre that you use images of a real um, funeral in a movie. But it gets worse. The only two people missing on the funeral was uh, the competitor of Golden Harvest from Shaw Brothers, Ray Run Run Shaw, who had just made a statement to the press, and uh, Betty Ting Pei, who stayed at home, most likely drugged with barbiturates, uh, because all the press was, of course, uh, furious about her involvement in Bruce Lee's passing. Mm -hmm. So, the frenzy is that uh, Bruce Lee did not die at home at uh, what, what uh, Raymond Chow and also his widow Linda Lee first had uh, testified, but he died at another woman's place. And not in normal condition, because he has an idiosyncratic reaction, that's the official, at least, explanation, to a so-called painkiller, which is not a painkiller. So he died at another woman's place, which is unusual. And at the age of 32, which is also more unusual. Few weeks before the original publishing of his uh, movie, yeah, which actually then was uh, starring a few days uh, later. So, he died at another woman's place. And you have to look twice if somebody dies in another place. For example, here in New York, 20 years ago, 20 some years ago, allegedly more than 3,000 people died in somebody's house as well, Brad. And I would consider that plain to be black. Yeah, you know, um, that was a really uh, very shocking 
situation there in New York. And I think that here in the States, uh, it hit the population so hard that we haven't really recovered from all of the, what, what can we say, the sensationalism around it? Because they used that event, if you remember mm-hmm. the, um, the document um, was uh, come up by a think tank, uh, by a neocon think tank. Uh, there was a document. I'm trying to remember the name of it. I'm just, it's too early in the morning for me, man. Mm-hmm. Had a rough week this week. Sorry, everyone. I'm just not firing on all eight cylinders right now. Yeah, Project for a New American Century. Okay, so you would you would think that um, this was just not a normal death at 9-11 then. That was a, a terrorist attack uh, in any case. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. uh, what? that's what we were sold. That's what we were sold, yes. And, uh, we I, were I, sold it was terrorism, but in reality it's all planned. Okay, but you see that this is just undoubtedly, this is uh, the World Trade Center, which is a complex. Mm. There is also a third building which collapsed that day. It was uh, building yeah, seven, the so-called right. Solomon the building. One, yeah. And this was a temple complex. Yeah, this was a Freemason ritual. And not only this, that, that there's so much to it when we talked about that in um, the conspiracy theories about the American rituals. But um, I'm just uh, trying to get a focus on that uh, kind of a plane here, okay? That looks a very strange plane because uh, yes. with a big uh, wing on the back, uh, it, uh, I have a hard time imagining that is a, a passenger liner, passenger li- is a usual liner. <clears throat> but apart from that, um, I think that you would agree that it looks like... Uh, yeah, almost black, okay? Then I present well, you, you know, another here's picture. here's the thing, Michael. Huh? <laughs> here's the thing, you know. There is so much speculation going on about the events of, of 2001, September 11, 2001. And, uh, you know, I, I dare I even bring it up. There are no, people I just, that... I just wanted to touch on the subject that you can't be sure of anything that you will be presented in the media. That's my subject. Right. Ju- just click, look at this picture here, where, of course, that must be the second plane because the first tower is obviously already hit. Yeah. Correct. Okay, we can agree on that. Now, look at this from another angle. Obviously, it was the second plane because the first tower had already been hit. Yeah, so even this, that must be the reflection of the sun, that the plane is now not black, but uh, silver or what else. I do not know. And Well, yeah, Michael, you know, there are people that claim that that was a hologram. You know that. <laughs> I would, I would just say that you can't trust your eyes because we are going into the satanic media, which means that it's just all baloney. <laughs> yeah. It's just all witchcraft of, of a Jesuit called Athanasius Kirche of the so-called Magic Lantern. Yeah, so everything can be faked, everything can be manipulated, it can be uh, modified, uh, photoshopped and whatever. Thank you for bringing that up, Michael. That's a very valid point that you bring up here. Yeah, so we have to take everything in consideration and uh, you see that also people may be um, blackmailed or what else. You can't trust anybody. You have only to use your common sense. Yeah, so these are just uh, pictures who do not uh, add up because uh, now something changes here. And uh, yeah, also I have been told that there are some kind of a crisis actors too. So people who have a special um, purpose in uh, doing as if. And uh, don't forget that uh, we are talking about an actor and an actor's death. And we're talking about many people in the actor's business. So who's acting who? Yeah. Speaking about actors and dying in somebody else's place, John F. Kennedy also died in somebody's car. Of course, officially it was his car, but that car was just being lent by the Ford Motor Company. So officially that car belonged to the Ford Motor Company. So you can assume that John F. Kennedy tragically died if the pictures are serving this correctly, in a car been on loan from the Henry Ford Motor Corporation. 
got me. He did not die in his bed at home. The 3,000 so-called people in the United States on 9-11 did not die on their bed peacefully at home. And Bruce Lee did not die in his bed peacefully alone too. Therefore, with the 50th anniversary, don't trust anybody. And I'm, I have no personal affiliation with Jackie Chan or Chris Tucker or whomsoever. I'm not affiliated with anybody. I have no sympathy or antipathy. Um, you see that I have no problem with that. Yeah, but these people are all in the industry. You won't find any unrelated people here. They are all in the Actors Guild, all in the business here. They are all in the Matrix. Jackie Chan is a Silver Bohemia star. He is a member of the British Empire. <laughs> yeah, remember that during the time when Bruce Lee was dying, uh, Hong Kong uh, belonged to Great Britain. Yeah, so he's officially one of the people who are representing Hong Kong before and after 1996, when there was a big break from the United Kingdom to China. And he was awarded the Silver Bohemia Star, of course. A five-pointed star. What else could it be? Yeah. Of course. And so that Mr. Chan also faced a little problem, which is uh, in the uh, same uh, uh, water than Bruce Lee, because uh, many people tell you that Bruce Lee there is a family curse. That's why he died so suddenly, also young. Hmm? One product with Chan, this is just pure Wikipedia, he had endorsed in China was a little tyrant and produced by Subo in Nintendo Entertainment System hardware. Um, clone marketed as a learning machine to circumvent China's then ban on video game consoles. In 2010, Chan served as a brand ambassador for Kaspersky's lab antivirus software in Asia. Let me tell you that antivirus software, this virus software is also something which has been together with, close together with uh, Bill Gates. Um, uh, because many people uh, think that uh, viruses are necessarily bad and uh, they affect uh, anything because they have been used to the word and the mentioning of viruses uh, slowly, solely for uh, computer programs also. Yeah? So this is a big agenda behind it to get used to some words like virus too. There's an urban legend called the Jackie Chan curse. Yeah? Um, ABC reported news reported in 2010 that the legend originated because a slew of products sold in China bearing his name, smile and seal of approval have proven defective, prone to explosion and in one case potentially damaging to consumers' health. This led to belief that any product or company which was endorsed by Jackie Chan would suffer setbacks. Yeah? So they are very, very superstitious in Asia. Jackie Chan married in 1982 a Taiwanese actress. Remember, J um, Betty Ting Pei was Taiwanese too. Their son, a singer and actor, J.C. Chan, was born the same year. Chan had an extramarital affair with Elaine Ying Yi Lai and has a daughter, Etang Chok Lam, by her born on 18 January 1999. I said, Brad, look at the date. Mm -hmm. 18 January 1999, the poor child. Yeah. Yeah. And if you look on, on other pages, uh, they tell you that she's born on November the 19th, uh, which is very odd because that would resemble 9 11. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just me that who's looking to these small details here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, is, is uh, quoted. Yes, put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, one of the prolific movies of uh, Jackie Chan called Armor of God. What was the third commandment? You should not take the name of the Lord uh, or the name of God in vain. Of course, we are talking about the satanic media agenda here. Mm hmm. 
And uh, many people have a hard time believing in Jackie Chan's quote that uh, it was just a normal dying in somebody's house because an extremely athletic and successful young man just dies normally in somebody's house makes sense. <sighs> yeah, and then people say, no, he died from allergic reaction to aspirin. Yeah, no conspiracy here. Yeah, okay, move on. So, Jackie Chan is also not uh, always honest, because he claims to make uh, the stunts himself, but uh, he's got a so-called stunt team, and uh, people have proven that he does not uh, do all his stunts, so no fear, no stuntman, no equal, it is just another marketing attitude, uh, it's nothing of substantial, because uh, he's not always doing his own stunts. So people assume that Bruce Lee had taken painkillers also for his pain in the back, for his uh, sacral nerve injury. So we have to skip a bit. And according to movies that uh, Betty Ting Pei later starred in called uh, Bruce Lee and I, where she displayed the sexual lover of Bruce Lee, um, this is what happened. So she called uh, Raymond Chow. This, these are both actors who desperately tried to awake Bruce Lee, who lied on the bed. Okay. So... According to Lee's wife, Linda, Lee met producer Raymond Chow at 2 p.m. at home to discuss the making of the movie Game of Death. They worked until 4 p.m. and then drove together to the home of Lee's colleague, Betty Ting Pei, a Taiwanese actress. <laughs> Lee complained of a headache and Ting gave him the painkiller Equagisic, which contains both aspirin and the tranquilizer Meprobomate. Meprobomate, marked at Milltown is an anxiolytic drug. It was the best-selling minor tranquilizer to calm somebody down for a time, but has largely been replaced by benzodiazepines, etc., etc. Equagesic was discontinued in the United States, possibly because of its toxic profile and more adequate drugs available. Specifically, reprobomate is more toxic than benzodiazepines, which are also useful as a muscle relaxant. Martial artist Bruce Lee died of cerebral edema caused by an allergic reaction to equagesic according to the corona examination. People ask, who would win? One of the most skilled and physically fit martial artists of the century or one medical pill? And this is an unfair comparison because Bruce Lee was not quite healthy at the time of his passing. And it has nothing to do, as far as I'm concerned, about any heart problems, uh, what uh, Betty Ting Pei tries to tell you. Yeah? So this is the equagesic pill. Me probe I made with aspirin. Hmm. Uh, okay. yeah. Suicidal attempts with me probe made have resulted in drowsiness, coma, shock, and respiratory collapse. Some suicidal attempts have been fatal. Yeah, so it, it just the amount of uh, stuff which is needed. Then. So the doctor that Bruce Lee knew was Dr. Langford. Yeah? And he said, in the meantime, we know that Bruce had admitted taking cannabis also on the day of his death. And um, after we did all the things that uh, to, uh, he, he just uh, went out of the hospital and said that he wanted to have further examination in the United States. And he went to an American neurosurgeon who said the drug, speaking here of cannabis, was harmless and that he even himself, that neurosurgeon, experimented with the drug sometimes because he found that very relaxing. Remember, this is 1973. Many peoples in the 60s and 70s were into drugs. And many people, of course, also were dying because of an overdose of drugs. And this is what he states in that documentary. He said, 
You got to throw your elbow out of joint to reach in some pocket for an equagesic conclusion when this other evidence, speaking of cannabis, is so obvious and that may be superficial judgment on my part, but I really had trouble coming up with that equagesic verdict. You almost have to use an Ouija board to come to that conclusion. <laughs> And it was not his conclusion, Brett, but that was the conclusion of that Scotland Art in Donald Tear. So they flew in a specialist who then was uh, researching the origin of the death of Bruce Lee. And then the press got aware that cannabis was in Lee's stomach. And they even claimed that Lee was a sick man. And the problem is that in the family of Bruce Lee and his friends, they all knew that he was doing that uh, temple balls, Nepalese temple balls. This is a larger picture of it all. Yeah. Yeah. This you can eat. You don't burn it, you just eat. And they can be very, very effective. And they can be very, very, very dangerous if you overdose them. And according to many, many people on the set of his latest movies, also on the first incident on May the 10th in the Golden Harvest uh, studio, he was chewing these temple balls bread. Mm -hmm. And now you know why... Mr. Dr. Langford said it is much more likely that he had overdosed these the temple balls yeah, than one pill of equagesic containing aspirin and meprobomate. To make matters worse, of course, the press said, and two days later, Bruce Lee was a sick man. He had so much illnesses. He suffered from epileptic uh, seizures. He had... Uh, yeah, like Deputy Ding Pei said, heart problems, he had any kind of illnesses, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, and then out of the blue came so-called drug letters from one of his friends who also starred in, uh, in a movie with him, Bob Baker, that Bruce Lee was ordering stuff from Bob Baker to be sent abroad from the United States into Hong Kong. Because in Hong Kong at that time, speaking of 1973, any drugs were forbidden. Yeah? So even the dosage of uh, cannabis yeah, would have caused a big scandal because it was forbidden, uh, not legal, illegal, in Hong Kong at that time. Yeah? So uh, this was already a scandal. And then these drug letters, they appeared. and. Uh, you have now to stretch your mental capabilities a bit, yeah? So, Bruce Lee drug letter. So, can you imagine? Brad, everybody knows Bruce Lee. I guess. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that more than 40 years after his passing, out of the blue, they found letters, drug letters from him on the flea market. How awesome is that? So the letters themselves were recently discovered at the flea market and have since been auctioned in the United States for approximately $160,000. Can you imagine that? That just letters were discovered at the flea market. It is just like a virus out of the blue happening in some fish market. And I have, I have a hard time believing that. I yeah, well, how, how do you verify the authenticity of these letters? Yeah, that's, a, that's the next problem. Yeah, that's the next problem because um, his so-called uh, um, uh, drug dealer was a uh, certain Bob Baker because he died in 1993. Yeah? So then more than uh, 25 years later, these letters were out of a sudden being discovered at the flea market. That looks like a case of uh, like Kennedy. You just uh, 
get out some information so that all the press is just uh, uh, totally flabbergasted about this information. So we do not know um, what, what's about it, but uh, here are letters discovered on a flea market. Yeah, like um, Bob airmail me some Coca-Cola. And that allegedly is a code phrase read for cocaine. Yeah. Bob Cooley sent me some coke. How's everything? Stoned as hell. Yeah. So that's what these uh, letters are telling you. And uh, there are some pages out there who are just um, been uh, been handing over that information that it has been stoned. Uh, I know that is the just okay. That that's that. Uh, I know I just made a minor mistake, but uh, allow me to correct myself. What's happening here? Because we need that soon. So what about your authenticity? You can't fake everything today with computer programs. Why it has not been showing up 40 years before, or at least 20 years before, after Bob Baker had been died? Bruce Lee's marijuana use had been recently well documented, at least marijuana, uh, mostly thanks to Matthew Pauly's 2080 biography on the martial arts icon. It was Robert Baker or Bob Baker who started out as a volunteer um, in 1964 and then became one of Bruce Lee's close friends and confidant. And it was long be rumored that he was Bruce Lee's drug dealer. I think the first one who came up with that was uh, Bruce Lee's uh, widow, second husband, Tom Bleeker. Mm -hmm. And nobody wanted to believe him. And then out of a sudden, 25 years later or 20 years later, uh, these letters appear. That's so strange. It's so strange. Yeah, so I need more paper. That could also be code words here, but I just want to leave you in the rain. Um, air me some fine sea. Maybe, maybe cocaine, Coca-Cola most definitely is cocaine is mm. coke and then it has a very interesting thing if that would be authentic uh, it would be on uh, april the 16th in 1973 that is uh, three weeks before his first uh, uh, incident at golden harvest studios where he fainted uh, linda lee his wife wrote how are you doing we hope things are straightening out for you say thanks to beth most likely his wife, for taking the wrist and sending the last shipment to Bruce. Don't worry about Bruce using the sea. He is not going overboard. I have seen the letter, but I have not uh, shown it yet. He's not going overboard. Yeah, And uh, also that uh, she said that uh, he had, she had also um, bought uh, some stuff for, ex for exact measuring uh, on the cocaine. Yeah, don't ask me where that is. Also, that is it's thousands of pages. The goodies could be coke, acid, means LSD, hash or grass. She asks for mushrooms. What is it? Psilo... Oh. Psilocybin. Yeah, something. It's, it's hard for me to... Psilocybin. Yeah, yeah. So... I, I have seen that letter here. I have not uh, Im implemented it here. Don't worry about Bruce using the cocaine. He's not going overboard. And there are many people who are nowadays are believing that he was dying about an overdose of cocaine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Usually cocaine has been will be snort and you have to measure it quite accurately. And of course, it's very expensive. And uh, usually also it can be injected uh, by access to syringes. Uh, one very famous alleged cocaine user if he would have ever existed would be sherlock holmes that's why i came across that video here cocaine in the sherlock holmes stories and their parodies in that letters it seems likely that uh, they were ordering cocaine as well on May the 10th, less than a month after that letter of don't worry, Bruce uh, and the cocaine, he will not go overboard, that letter signed by Linda, Bruce Lee collapsed. 
But I do not know and nobody knows if he was using cocaine that day or he was just using his hash brownies. Uh, I happen to know that on the May 10th incident, uh, the doctors were retracting out of his stomach uh, some leaves of cannabis. Um, cannabis, yes. Oh, thank you. No problem. Yeah. What's really interesting is that you have to take into consideration that it is quite common in China to have been used to drugs, especially at uh, cannabis. Um, also in his documentary of Bruce Lee Alive, it's been stated that uh, um, the father of Bruce Lee had an opium addiction. And I have read the entire biography of 700 pages and he quite clearly goes into this, that he was smoking opium daily and together with his friends on his bed and with the pipe going on and going around the circles and all the stuff. Mm -hmm. So it was very common. Also, it was, of course, very common in the 60s and 70s to use any kind of drugs. Mm -hmm. But, of course, the result of the trial could only be mis adventure death by misadventure because there was a million hanging on on lee's verdict for the insurance companies because bruce lee had stated that he did not use any drugs and linda stated that on that trial too yeah that at least bruce lee would not have used any drugs prior to that insurance policy date brad my 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 so this is also one hint. Next, next thing is coming up is that uh, there is a conspiracy theory that he might have uh, been a victim of any ninjas. Ninjas. Mm -hmm. So there is everything going on here. You can't imagine there are supernatural things going on. There are even Russian guys who are saying that they can get in touch with Bruce Lee. Um, like hypnosis and, and all the stuff, a Russian hypnotist communicates with Bruce Lee, who is at the seventh level, sixth level, sorry, of a soul realm. If we take that into um, consideration of uh, what the Bible explicitly tells us about in 1 Samuel chapter 28. Verse 7 and 8. Then Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I might go, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. And Saul disguised himself and put on another raiment. And he went, and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night and said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me up, or bring him up, whom I shall name unto thee. Yeah, that's necromancy. And we know that uh, in, in the beginning of the session, Brad had uh, quoted from Ecclesiastics, if I remember correct. Um, that the dead are just simply sleeping. Yeah, so they cannot be uh, traveling anywhere. Yeah, but uh, what people do everything for money, for money it seems. Yeah? They do everything for money. Also Tom Blicker, the second uh, husband of Bruce Lee's uh, widow then, he says, uh, well, um, as you, as many know, the Chinese in Hong Kong and elsewhere are very superstitious. So you can come with so many conspiracy theories uh, that it's, it's unbelievable. And um, there is also a video of him who says that uh, he was getting aware of a renowned psychic who has channeled Bruce Lee in 1982. Yeah, it's unbelievable as it may uh, uh, sound, but... Uh, that's uh, Jenny O'Connor says there is some big drug dealing in the middle of all that that caused the death of Bruce Lee. Yeah, and uh, I think that is that medium that uh, together with Jay Leno here, who has a very remarkable uh, chin, by the way, <laughs> um, that is that medium here that uh, he's talking about.
Mm -hmm. And he's talking about the name, the mysterious name will be Chong E Itsu. We now know from the Bible that it's not possible to bring any spirits up of any deceased one. So, Brett, let me ask you that rhetoric question. What would be that kind of a spirit who would be brought up during a seance, during a necromancy, during a witch or during any kind of, of a stuff of a psychic channeling? It's a demon spirit. A demon spirit, yes. Yeah. So you can't trust anybody who's doing a psychic, uh, trying to channel or hypnotize or what else uh, to get the truth out of uh, any murder case or any mystery of, of anything. Yeah. So it, they are just simply making a fool out of people, in my humble opinion. Yeah. I'm not speaking of Tom, because Tom Blicker is just uh, uh, telling the event as he has heard it. Yeah. So he said that the medium was violently writing and Bruce said that he had been injected by hydrochloride. Yeah, that's that's the video here. Yeah. Um, he had still apparently a sense of humor in the afterlife. I do not know about the belief of uh, Tom Blika. I've seen him once in front of a Christmas tree. So I suppose that he is a Catholic. Uh, also, I know the name of his wife. Uh, which uh, very much points into the Catholic uh, region. But uh, if he would uh, look into the Bible, he would see that uh, it's not possible to get in touch with deceased spirits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's just uh, quoting here from that article. Yeah. Bruce said, laughing, he said, Judas, uh, uh, he had been betrayed by Judas. Uh, when we know what that means biblically, Yeah, so I suppose that he's a Catholic. Yeah, and then he said seriously a white word in heaven. Yeah, so that is that video here. If you are interested in all that stuff in that mystery, you can look that video up. It's called Renowned Psychic Channels Bruce Lee in 1982. Yeah, so and uh, it has been claimed that there has been drug dealing in the middle of all that that caused his death. You see that uh, when you take that drug letters uh, for real, um, yeah, there was drug dealing and uh, most likely all or many of these uh, actors, uh, uh, politicians and uh, wealthy people who could afford that uh, they were into drug dealings and uh, drug. Uh, you see that uh, even the father of Bruce Lee was an opium addict. So it is no wonder that Bruce Lee got in touch with drugs, at least in that case, in that regard, that it will suit him to uh, to relax or suit him to come up to with new ideas and and uh, and the alike. And uh, you can just guess uh, who is running the drug uh, rings in Hong Kong. Hmm? Take a lucky guess. Hmm? Yeah, so Bruce Lee would be very angry in his death. And you see this just demons. Yeah, so they are just handing over some names and dates and uh, people think that there is something to it. Um, Betty Ting Pei, Bruce said yes, Betty does in fact have two brothers. Uh, the name could could fit, uh, the names been mentioned here could fit to two of the brothers of uh, Betty Ting Pei and this will be interesting quite later on. Yeah, so and um, And there's also a name mentioned, Sato, uh, S-A-T-O-R. Uh, I need my body found at rest, Sato. And I said, oh, that is no coincidence. And then you know from which direction that psychic channel spread. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's the infamous Sato Arepo Tenet Opera Rotas um, in inscription here. Uh, which can be found at uh, many, 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 many pagan places. Uh, one famous place or infamous place actually would be um, the temple in Pompeii. Yeah, that's where Pink Floyd has played live in Pompeii. Yeah, which uh, had an earthquake and the majority of people there just were buried alive. Yeah, and people worship the death in just when they just go into Pompeii and look at the remains of the dead. How how ugh, is is that yeah yeah he said uh, he wants the world to know that he had two sperm bank appointments so that he left his sperm in two banks yeah so that uh, we get an uh, i do not know uh, another bruce lee in the future or what and you you have to there are people who are believing that 
it, I'm just handing over that information, and I find it extremely hard to to imagine that uh, that should happen. Yeah, yeah. So Bruce said, as a psyche channels him, what is as a, a demon says that uh, Bruce was murdered. Yeah, and that's what got him so angry. Yeah, maybe Tom will read the Bible again in First Samuel, which we have stated, or Ecclesiastes, and he will come up to that conclusion that there is nothing to the psychic medium but uh, these people uh, are fooling others maybe for money i do not know yeah but uh, there are many 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 people who are just claiming they have some abilities like uri geller the guy who was banning spoons in the german television and everybody was falling for that although he just made a trick yeah he just uh, 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 before that so-called magic trick or this uh, tele uh, um, uh, this ability that he allegedly had um, he was just rubbing some uh, powder on this uh, spoon yeah so that he could easily bend it yeah so that made a chemical reaction to that spoon bread and uh, millions of people mm -hmm. on the television and i was i think it was i was nine or ten at the time uh, they said oh that's fascinating that guy can uh, bend spoons uh, can you tell me of one thing uh, what does he how does he serve mankind with the ability of bending spoons <laughs> good question for disabled people or what you see that uh, just have to take it with a with a funny side but you see that these people are just most likely showing off although he had been part of an experiment from the united states government that i have to say yeah, I looked it up uh, so that he was uh, making uh, drawings in another room of uh, uh, telekinesis. So he was uh, doing uh, some kind of uh, of an experiment if he could uh, see things through a wall and all this stuff. Yeah. So there are so many, many rumors in the case of Bruce Lee. A Japanese assassin, a poisonous herb, a self-inflicting snorting of cocaine. Yeah, that has been for rumors for years. So that uh, in a in, uh, few years ago, somebody came up uh, with a prolific book and wrote about his cocaine addiction. And that uh, most likely was that the cause of his death. Yeah, you see, nobody knows anything, but the speculation is uh, extremely uh, high because uh, the official uh, cause of death is uh, so much unlikely. Yeah. So you see the bullshit sorry the bs does not end yeah the killing involves also what known as a delayed death strike or a, uh, what is it a death palm and 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 what else uh it's a dim mark where you touch somebody and uh, with delay he will die yeah uh, gangsters and uh, Many, some people also think that Bruce Lee is still alive and uh, lives now in a remote corner of China and uh, will then come back 10 years after his death. But uh, it's just 1973, 10 years later, 1983, and nobody showed up. Yeah. So in that book that I have mentioned uh, briefly, Unsettled Matters from uh, Tom Bleeker, The Life and Death of Bruce Lee. He talks about uh, so many uh, awesome uh, incidents uh, during um, this, uh, the last years of Bruce Lee and especially the death. And also he's uh, talking about his conclusion of this equagesic. Let me quote something. What do we know about the May 10th incident? We've been told that Bruce, while in the dubbing room at Gordon Harvest, felt nauseated. Excusing himself, he then grew weak and perhaps fainted in a nearby restroom. Twenty minutes later, he regained his strength and returned to the dubbing room where he collapsed. Within minutes, he vomited and began convulsing. Another twenty minutes elapsed, after which he was taken to Baptist Hospital. So the nearby hospital that uh, Betty Ding Pei and uh, Raymond Shaw could have chosen but did not where he was found to have a very high fever and he was having difficulty breathing. Soon the doctors detected the brain swelling, which they were able to control by administering the drug Manitol. An hour and a half later, Bruce was revived and, following a period of amnesia, returned to normal. Is this scenario in any way similar to what occurred on the evening of July the 20th? Did Bruce feel nauseated? According to Raymond Chow and Betty Ting, Bruce only complained of a headache. Did he faint? 
Again, according to Raymond and Betty, Bruce went into Betty's bedroom to lie down. Immediately after that Raymond left and the implication derived from Betty's testimony is that Bruce fell asleep. Titi threw up? Doubtful. Dr. Lichette found marijuana in Bruce's stomach. What about difficulty breathing? Only Betty would know and she never mentioned it. What about fever? Bruce was dead on arrival at Queen Elizabeth Hospital and would have had a subnormal temperature. Sketchy. Fragmented. But the brain swelling was present on both days as it was also the ingestion of marijuana. Next examine more closely the coroner's, coroner's verdict that Bruce's death was caused by his hypersensitivity to a single tablet of equigesic. According to Betty Ting, she gave Bruce a commonly used headache pill which had been prescribed to her by her doctor for years. This in itself is troublesome. To begin with, equigesic is not prescribed for headache, but it's used to treat anxiety and stress in patients with musculoskeletal Musculoskeletal diseases, rheumatic disorders or injury to soft tissues such as muscles and ligaments. Based on Bruce's history of back and joint pain, it is understandable that he might have taken equigesic. The notion that Betty had been taking it for years is perplexing in that she had no medical history of musculoskeletal disorders. Secondly, equigesic is a controlled substance that is both physically and psychologically addicting. It isn't likely that any responsible physician would have prescribed this drug to Betty for years. Moreover, according to its manufacturer, Wyatt Laboratories, withdrawal from equigesic may cause the return of symptoms of anxiety, enuresia, insomnia or withdrawal reactions of vomiting, ataxia and tremors. The symptoms almost jump out at you, don't they? Insomnia, a common complaint of Bruce for well over a year. Anxiety, another. Anorexia, Bruce's history of weight loss and dehydration. Is it possible that Bruce was more frequent user of equigesic than we presumably has been told and that he was taking the drug to combat anxiety? Although this may shed light on some of Bruce's other problems, equigesic was not what caused Bruce's death. To prove this conclusively, we need to delve further into the drug itself as well as Bruce's medical history. And this is just a small excerpt from the book. This is another book of uh, Bruce Lee uh, from Matthew Polly, Bruce Lee Alive. Bruce Polly goes on to another theory. He said, July the 20th, 1973 was the hottest day of the month in tropical Hong Kong. In Betty Ting's Pay small apartment, Bruce demonstrated scene after kung fu scene from Game of Death. In telling the story, he acted out the whole thing, Raymond Shaw says, so that probably made him a little tired and thirsty. After a few sips, he seems to be a little dizzy. Just like on May the 10th, Bruce exerted himself in a hot enclosed space and ended up feeling faint and suffering from a headache to early signs of heat stroke. He wandered into Betty's bedroom, fell onto her bed and never got up again. A person who had suffered one heat stroke is at increased risk for another, said Dr. Lisa Leon, an expert of hyperthermia at the US Army Research Institute of Environmental Medicine. Patients experience multi-organ dysfunction during the hours, days and weeks of recovery, which increases risk for long-term disability and death. Mm -hmm. Of the minor drugs in Bruce's stomach on July the 20th, neither cannabis nor meprobomate is known to cause severe edema. The only possible suspect is aspirin. The Mayo Clinic lists a potential reaction to aspirin as uh, hives, itchy skin, runny nose, red eyes, sweating of lips, tongue of face, coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath and anaphylaxis, a rare life-threatening allergic reaction. According to his wife, Bruce was sleep deprived. By all accounts, the stress of filming Enter the Dragon had drained him physically and mentally. He had lost 15% of his total body weight in the previous two months and he had minimal body fat to start. His friends say he was drinking alcohol more frequently, although there is no evidence he imbibed the night before his collapse. 
and a month prior to his collapse, Bruce underwent surgery to have the sweat glands removed from his armpits because he felt his dripping pits looked bad on screen. Without these sweat glands, his body would have been less able to dissipate heat. And I don't buy this. I'm sorry, I don't buy this. Because there are so many other parts of the human body who are able to sweat. Yeah, your entire body can sweat. Yeah, the biggest organ in your body is the skin. Yeah. So, Matthew Polly thinks, in theory, that Bruce Lee could be a victim of a heat stroke. Yeah, even 27-year-old Minnesota. Ah, oh, look at this, Brad. Huh. I have to mm -hmm. enlarge it. I have to enlarge it. Yeah. Stringer Institute, which specializes in the prevention of sudden death from a heat stroke and is named after the 27-year-old Minnesota Vikings football player who died from a heat stroke in 2001. Mm -hmm. So, of course, heat stroke is a possibility, but I, I find that not very likely. I can tell you why. I'm not in the script. So, yeah. Because I have a hard time when somebody says, oh, I know the truth. Yeah, he says, uh, Matthew Polly in his book on July the 20th, 1973, Bruce Lee died from heat stroke. It is the most plausible scientific theory for his death. Consider the timeline. Yeah, because uh, the first uh, thing uh, occurred in May the 10th. He was just working in a small compartment uh, doing this uh, overdubbing of his uh, movie Enter the Dragon. His risk factor was increased by sleep deprivation, extreme weight loss, and the recent surgical removal of his armpit sweat glands. July the 20th was the hottest day of the month in tropical Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So, I have to decrease it a bit. So, Brad, this is an overview of the weather calendar for Hong Kong in 1973. We're talking about the 20th of July, and which is indicated here in uh, Celsius with 29.4. But it's not that this day is, uh, in, uh, is an exemption or so. Ex it's not that this day would be serve as an exception. But there are other days too, which are very hot. For example, the 29th uh, point three and July the 2nd. Uh, July cannot be counted because in... Uh, um, uh, so, sorry, sorry. Uh, in June. Um, July, 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 July. Yeah. So, if you look here, the week before, 14 and 15, also it was very hot with 28.2, 28.5. So that is just one degree Celsius. That not that much difference, Brett, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, June with 29 cannot be counted because he was then at his uh, neurosurgeon clinic in Los Angeles in the United States. Because I've looked it up in the timeline. Whoops, sorry. I've looked it up in the timeline that uh, in... Uh, June the 8th, he would return to Hong Kong. So he was until the 7th of June, he was in the United States. Yeah, so he did not uh, see that uh, June 2nd, that hot day. But there, there are other, other hot days in July too, with 28.9. So that is not that extreme high uh, temperature, 29.4, when other dates there are with 28.7, 28.9 and all this stuff. Yeah, sorry, I, I can't, uh, can't really see that, that problem. Uh, although heat stroke, of course, uh, means a severe illness, uh, occurs because of high external temperatures and physical exertions. Preventive measures including drinking sufficient fluids and avoiding excessive heat. But Brad, tell me, when he was in the flat of Betty Ting Pei the second time, he mm. did had drinks. He was in the shadow. He was not uh, in, in the bright uh, daylight. Mm -hmm. And he stayed right. there. He stayed there for hours. So what shall uh, convince me that he's got a heat stroke on that day? And it has been reported that uh, from two to four p.m. they were at Bruce Lee's home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he was not outside doing any uh, actions or so. 
that's my my problem with that uh, theory here yeah, also it happens that in young people with health without health problems most often in athletes outdoor labors or military personnel engaged in strenuous hot weather activity or first responders wearing heavy personal protective equipment and that's what what was not the case Yeah, example of a checklist to protect workers are uh, block out direct sun and other heat sources and drink fluids often and tell me. I find it not highly likely. Yeah, in rare cases, brain damage has been reported. In rare cases, uh, I don't think so that these are just from rare cases. Uh, look at this name here. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Matthew Pauly is then ranting about Tom Bleeker because of his unsubstantiated claims that uh, Bruce Lee had a problem with uh, um, uh, cortisone uh, because of his uh, treatment of his uh, back pain. Uh, in Bleeker's scathing biography, he draws broad unsubstantial conclusions from Lee's crypto Kaidism, that is uh, one undecedented testicle caused Bruce to frequently suffer from impotence and inability to develop a major muscul musculature without the aid of anabolic steroids and a psychology immaturity. Um, I think that is highly li highly likely that also one testicle can gain another testosterone, but uh, you see that uh, that that is everybody makes mistakes. Yeah, but. Um, Matthew Pauly clearly says that the most likely um, a proximity um, theory of the disease of Bruce Lee would be overheating or heat stroke. Yeah? So that is from his book on page 539. Yeah? The hottest day of the month uh, and the uh, removal of his armpit sweat glands. Uh, imagine what kind of a small area the sweat glands are uh, comp compared to your entire back, for example. Yeah, so and the really big problem that I got is uh, if you look at this picture, Brad. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you see Betty Ting Pei, and this is Betty Ting Pei's apartment. What do you see? Mm. Mm. Looks quite luxurious. Yeah, well, that's not my yeah. point. Yeah my point is look oh at yeah air conditioner air yeah. condition everywhere uh-huh so what shall convince me when betty ting pay was an actress and she was not a, a low life yeah what shall convince me that they had not a, an air conditioning running or where they are sweating all over the place raymond Shaw does not say that he was sweating and if i now would reveal the fact that uh, when they found him finally um, the uh, the the car that that found him from the hospital, they found him dressed with this uh, uh, with his jacket. Yeah. Usually, dead people do not dress themselves. So, if it was that hot, why they found Bruce Lee with the shirt on? I'm just questioning. When it is so hot and when he is supposed to have a heat stroke, uh, when they were inside an apartment on the second floor, uh, with most likely and uh, with the air conditioning running, and he was drinking fluids, and he had, has uh, had, had a banana, if I remember correctly, and a Seven Up and all the stuff. Yeah. So why should he uh, suffer a heat stroke inside? And this is a drawing here from the bedroom of Betty Ting Pei with a drawing in white of the deceased body of Bruce Lee. Is there something you would recognize, Brad? You can see that uh, kind of a figure here in that drawing. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. How does he look like? He's just got his arms spread out wide. Yeah. And what is that kind of a position? Mm. Kind of odd. Mm. Don't know. What? What is it? Crucified. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Yeah, so that mm. looks to me very awkward that uh, somebody who finds a deceased one uh, find him in that position uh, with his arms spread wide and uh, also because usually you would have to make uh, aspiration and try to, to breathe, try to make heart massage or what else. Yeah, and uh, then they find him, uh, the ambulance driver finds him with his uh, shirt unbuttoned, red. You will f see that later in a later episode. Yeah, isn't that odd? But it is so extremely hot. Brad Pauli says it was the hottest day of the ones. And he died of a heat stroke. And then they find him with his shirt on. Yeah, of course, that's why he got a heat stroke, because he's got his shirt remaining on. Yeah, sure. So there are so many things. Yeah, so I, I don't buy it. I don't buy that for one minute. Yeah, so this is a picture of Bruce Lee. He was short-sighted. That's why he was always wearing glasses. Later, he was having uh, contact lenses. Yeah, and uh, he had many fights and many enemies here. Uh, arranging fights at indis indisclosed villa in the new territories in Hong Kong. Bruce didn't want to make it public and agreed it was just for fun. Um, a friend of mine came over and uh, said it just o also over uh, Bruce Lee was just too fast uh, Bruce ended the fight he was just too fast lasting um, since then uh, the other party Lau has tried to keep his loss a secret witness also complied to the secrecy of the fight so the matter has not been confirmed yeah it is very interesting when in one of the mo movies of Bruce Lee called Fist of Furry Furry it is about a teacher who has been poisoned yeah? so Bruce Lee said why did you kill my teacher why 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 Mm -hmm. Very strange, yeah, all these similarities. All the similarities. Yeah. On the other hand, uh, Raymond Chow, of course, uh, says officially in 1973, shortly after the uh, death of Bruce Lee, he says, I don't think there's anything suspicious causing his death, Brad. It is just dying in somebody's house. And this is the mm. boss that Jackie Chan is referring to. My boss picked mm. him up. That is Raymond Chow. But you don't think that is anything suspicious causing his death. But other people say, well, in relation to making enemies, uh, Bruce, there isn't any problems there. Yeah, He got many, many enemies. And what's very awkward is that he only have uh, finished uh, four and a half movies. That's the same amount of movies that his uh, son Brandon Lee also finished when Brandon Lee was officially accidentally shot during the recording of the movie The Crow by Michael Messi, shot with a revolver who then had no or not also a blanket but a yeah but it just went on accidentally and he was shot in the in the stomach and he died a few hours later yeah and uh, bruce lee said okay uh, to make it big in hollywood first i have to do some action movies in uh, hong kong but he did not survive that he could not go back to hollywood because uh, then he suddenly died at the age of 32 and uh, Brandon Lee wanted to be a prolific actor, went to an actor school and wanted to make drama and all the stuff and he just agreed to go with his name of Brandon Lee, the son of Bruce Lee, into action and martial arts as well, just for a short period of time, for four and a half films, yeah, four and a half movies and uh, what happened that he was also, he had an accident, yeah, it was also in a case of uh, Brandon Lee, it was ruled as a death by misadventure yeah so also the decision of Brandon Lee led eventually to his death his relative and villain in one movie she can says his sister has said this his sp spine was injured in the past one day after New Year Bruce Lee said, Uncle Kin, I won't live as long as you. And uh, he gave him the um, tip to practice less and sleep more, which uh, sounds very logic. It's interesting that his father was an opium addict and he was uh, 64 when he was dying in 1965, a few days after Brandon Lee was born. Bruce Lee just made it at the age of 32, so half the age of his father and Brandon Lee only to 28. 
Yeah, and he says I treat movies as just a side job. Maybe he felt that something is wrong. So that was the session seven about the official traditional methods of the Wikipedia with the allergic reaction to aspirin, allergic reaction, idiosyncratic reaction to meprobamate or aspirin and heat stroke and uh, all the other things uh, as well. And in the next session we will go into a territory in which uh, usually media does not go to and uh, even I found a video which I will uh, show you that uh, highly forbids to find any conspiracy in the death of Bruce Lee. I hope that we will make it through to the next session because the next session 8 uh, will be quite uh, uh, arguably uh, a very uh, strange one and then we will move on to the second to next episode which will deal with the united states thanks so very much for having me and please read your bible that you don't be fooled by any mediums and don't be fooled by any traps uh, but you stick and stay to the truth thanks very much for having me and uh, see you soon and uh, Maranatha handing it off to my beloved brother in Christ, Brett. Thank you, Michael. Yes, it's quite a bit to take in. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to hear where Michael is going to take this series because it's, well, it's not where we might expect. Right, Michael? <laughs> no, I, Brad's got the advantage that I have uh, showed him uh, some scripts uh, before um, and, and so therefore he knows that uh, all the talking about Bruce Lee does have uh, something to do with a much, much bigger picture uh, and so that uh, we have a reason in uh, spending our time with it. It is not, not just a fascination about an individual who uh, did not believe in God, uh, sadly as it is, but it is just a, a broader picture because uh, with that maybe I would like to shoot off and to end the satanic media agenda uh, because then you see the big picture. It also has to do with other individuals which we have talked about in the past and that's the interesting thing that i think then the circle will be closing brett mm -hmm. that's right that's right thanks again michael we'll catch up with everyone next time and maranatha mm -hmm.